What is going on, everybody? I'm AJ, and I'm going to give you guys a FanDuel preview for UFC 259. Before doing that, you're probably wondering, what is the screen in my face that is not FanDuel MMA? We're going to talk about that right away. Price Picks. Price Picks is a cool fantasy site. Very cool. Um, use promo code AJ100 for 100% instant deposit bonus up to $100 available. Um, Price Picks is the most straightforward fantasy game on the market and the only one with 100% instant deposit bonus regarded as the best in the industry. Um, Price Picks is available in many different geographic areas across North America with more to come. Price Picks, there's there's no optimizers, there's no sharks, there's no fish, no mass multi-entries. It's just you versus a projection upon an entry. Think of it as just an entry or a fantasy prop or a pick em. Uh, It's available on the app store or on google and on google play as well so this is it this is it right here this is we're looking at nba um there's plenty of other sports uh college basketball there's there's gaming uh nhl as well so really really cool stuff and like i said 100 percent instant 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 deposit bonus excuse me um for promo code aj100 so you put 100 bucks in you're gonna get 100 punch a bucks matched um i can't get it out because i'm just so excited about it but yeah um yeah looking forward to that but we're here to talk about uh, FanDuel, uh, UFC 259. Uh, that's that's the main focus here. But uh, yeah, you know, with this particular card, I'm, I'm very very interested in from a, from a DFS perspective, from a betting perspective. Um, got a lot of bets placed on this card. You guys have my DraftKings content out already. I did do a rotor wire FanDuel article, uh, but I wanted to get on here and do the the video, the the um, you know the visual version of that. Um, and that's what we're going to discuss here, right? Um, so with these, uh, with FanDuel, if you're not familiar, there's the MVP format, very similar to DraftKings, only, uh, the site FanDuel doesn't give uh, a premium for the, the fighters that you put as your MVP, your captain. So in other words, you're getting, you know, more than a, a multiplier of the points that they score without paying more than the normal salary. So Amanda Nunes is $23. She's going to be $23 as your captain. Pretty simple, um, and that's where I'm looking for on the slate for the uh, captain or the MVP fighter. It's mainly Amanda Nunes, and she's going to be the obvious one, and she's going to be popular. But it's just a spot I want to invest in. Amanda Nunes has one of the best finished props I've ever seen in a pro MMA fight, nearly minus 400. And it's a great matchup for her. Um, you, you're not going to get much of a debate from me. You know, she's one of the not only has one of the biggest inside distance lines, but going out along with that, she's got one of the best odds to win per the betting odds. Um, it's a great style matchup for her. And she is in a five round fight. So she has five rounds of need be to accrue more fan duel points. Um, I think she makes for a great play as touched on. Um, she will be popular, but she is personally, in my opinion, the, the best play on the slate. Um, so she's definitely a fighter that I want in my MVP uh, games as my MVP same thing with Islam Akashev, who is $22, just $1 below Amanda. Um, he has the potential, I think, to, to go out here and, and grapple a lot. Drew Dober, his opponent, that's been kind of his kryptonite in the past. You know, guys that could take him down. We saw in his most recent fight. Uh, Alexander Hernandez took him down while rocked. And Makashev is one of the best grapplers in the UFC. He's a 2016 men's combat Sambo world champion, gold medal. Or I don't, I don't know what medal, but he, he did medal in there. Um, he has the potential to dominate, get this fight to the ground, advance position, and get a submission. Um, I like him for both formats. I know we're dog talking FanDuel here, but that's the type of fighter that I want to prioritize in DraftKings. Not so much these fighters that are more so reliant on you know, a, a volume-based decision. There's some fighters that we'll get to that kind of fit that prototype. I want to get the fighters that I think could grapple really well, grapple effectively. In the case of this matchup here with Makashev and Dover, I think uh, Makashev is a very – very strong grappling advantage here. And I do think that he has the potential to go out here, uh, get the fight to the ground, and then get a submission over Drew Dober. We've seen Dober submitted um, in, in some of his losses, and um, I think Makachev has the potential to dominate, as does Sean Brady. Sean Brady, um, just a few bucks cheaper, you know, $20 there. He's also in the same range as Batista. In Lemos, I think he's a, a better play than all three of them. Brady, I think, has the potential to 
to dominate this fight pretty much everywhere. I think he's got much better cardio than Matthews. I think he's a better striker. We've seen Matthews finish in the past. I think it's possible that Brady goes out here and gets this fight to the ground, gets in a dominant position, and then possibly submits Jake Matthews. He's another fighter <clears throat> that I do like for the MVP format. Him, Makashev, Nunez, if I were to rank him in order, it would be Nunez, Makashev, and Brady. But those are the three that I am most intrigued with for the MVP captain spot. Uh, because of that reason, they have strong chances to win per the betting odds. They both have a lot of potential. All three of them have a lot of potential to go out there, grapple, and get a finish. Um, so those three are the ones that I like the most as an MVP fighter. But I also like fighters such as Charles uh, Carlos Olberg. Um, Earl's Medics, those are riskier options, but they all have high upside. They all have the opportunity to go out there, get a quick finish, um, as do their inside distance lines indicate. You know, if Charles, uh, Carlos Olberg has a finish prop of plus 120, um, depending on what book you look at, that was five dimes right there. We've also got Earl Smedic, um, minus 110, pick him. But the thing with this and a lot of other pay-per-view cards, people will not want to target guys like this. They will want to target the names that they're more familiar with. It's it's just human nature. We want to we want to do what is more comfortable for us. We don't want to get out of our comfort zones as much as uh, maybe we should. It, it helps us grow, and and that's kind of uh, you know not not to get too philosophical out here, but that is always going to be an edge to be had in DraftKings. Um, Targeting fighters like Olberg and Medich, maybe it doesn't work out, but it also very well could. The finish props suggest it. I think my eyes tell me, you know, my eyes do tell me that they're they're in solid spots to finish. Medich, all of his wins, uh, all, most of them except for one, have all come in the first round. Um, and Carlos Olberg looks like a, a, a tremendous prospect who has a, a pretty clear striking advantage in the matchup, in my opinion. So. Those two guys are also guys that I like for MVP. They're not going to be nearly as popular, certainly not as popular as Nunez, Makashev, all the other title contenders, yet uh, they have big upside. So I like those fighters in this format, whether I want to make them as my MVP or just in my lineups in general. They're risky, but the, the cliche, the old saying, high risk, high reward, those are fighters that I'm interested in for DraftKings. Not so much uh, Israel Adesanya, who's at $21. Um Israel Adesanya is a great fighter. I love him. I bet him in the past. I just don't think this is the best matchup for him to produce a lot of DFS points in any in any site, really, FanDuel or or DraftKings. Um, it pertains to FanDuel. That's the focus here. But he has to, I think, go out here and get a knockout to to justify the price, to get value. And I'm just not sold on that outcome. Um, Jan is, is generally very durable. He's generally defensively sound. And I think we could kind of see a, a lower output methodical type kickboxing fight, um, in which case, in theory, either guy could win by knockout. But again, they're both generally durable, generally defensively sound. I think there could be a lot of stalling here. Um, so it pertains to Israel. I'm going to take an underweighted stance to him. That's just a, a risk I'm willing to take. Maybe I'm way off on this, but that's going to be an edge that I want to have on this pay-per-view card. People will feel like they have to target Israel because he's in the main event. Um, but that's just a, a chance that I'm willing to take and, uh, we'll see exactly what happens, but I, I feel like Israel is, is very much tied to an early finish. And I'm just not, I just think that there's many other ways that this fight could play out. And so I want to be underrated to Israel as with Batista. I'm not that big on him either. Jones, uh, showcasing that UFC debut, very tough, um, very tough to finish historically. And I just don't think Batista is like a big power puncher. I would classify him as a more of a volume guy. Um, so with Batista, it's kind of similar to Israel, but he's got even less wiggle room to, to work with, right? He's got three rounds instead of five. He's mostly tied to, I think, a knockout, um, in which case that's just another stand that it's not that I think these guys are bad plays, but I just would rather target other options in the range out of respect for prioritization. So Mario Batista at $20 here is another fighter that I want, just want to be underweight to as with Amanda Lemos. Look, I mean, she, she came through with a good score last time out against uh, Mizuki in a way, but this matchup against Souza, who's generally been very tough to finish uh, also Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. I just don't really know where Lemos is going to impose um, uh, on Souza enough to really justify a big, FanDuel score. She's a better striker than Souza, but does that automatically equal that she's going to go out there and get a lot of points? Personally, I don't think so. Uh, she's shown the willingness to slow down as the fight progresses. She's shown the willingness to, to give up the clinch position for multiple minutes. 
it's just not something that I want to invest heavily in it. And we'll see exactly what happens. But uh, my eyes tell me that that's just a stand that I'm willing to take. Uh, Erlos Medis, we talked about him. Alexander Rakic at $19. He's another fighter that I'm definitely interested in for GPPs. The fight between him and Santos, I think, is going to be high action, high variance. Um, they're both light heavyweights. They're both dangerous. Um, Santos has been finished in the majority of his losses. And uh, Rakic is a a very talented fighter um, who's improving each and every single fight out there. I see the improvements with Rakic. Um, so Rakic is a guy that I would want to target because he has finishing upside. He has some grappling upside, though I don't think he's going to have his dominant of a grappling performance as say Glover to share it in last time. And, and that is my reason for targeting Rakic. It's not, it's not that I'm like, you know, 110% confident he wins. It's just for this, this format on FanDuel. I want to invest in, in Rakic with the thought process of he's a guy that could go out there, get the fight to the ground or get a finish um, I, on the ground or on the feet, if you want to think about it both ways. But uh, he's definitely a guy that I would like some exposure to in FanDuel. Uh, Algerine Sterling and Pio Trian. $18 for Jan, $17 for Sterling. I mean, look, it's a it's a title fight that's very reasonably priced. Uh, we got five rounds to work with here. I think they're both definitely in play. Um, for cash games, I like Sterling more. I just am more sold on him winning. Got a little bit of odds value considering it's a pick em fight. Yes, he yet he's a dollar cheaper than, than Jan. He's even cheaper than Jan on, on DraftKings as well. Um, he's got great volume to Sterling. Um, I'm not really sold that he's going to go out here and just out grapple Jan. Jan's shown to be a very solid defensive grappler. Um, so I think Sterling going out there and, and winning a volume based decision is, is what I'm looking for when I'm investing in him. And it's, it's a reasonable enough of an outcome to where um, I do want some exposure to Aljamain Sterling. Piotrion, again, he's in another five round fight. And I think if he wins, there's a decent chance it's by knockout. I, I just think that Jan is going to struggle a bit here at kicking range. And it's going to force him into this fight where he has to close distance and get in the pocket and hurt Sterling with something. So even though I'm betting Sterling here, it's not like I'm going to let my ego get in the way and, and say, no way am I going to play Jan. Jan's a fine play in, in FanDuel, in my opinion. Um, so we'll see. I, I definitely do like to target this fight more for FanDuel than, than Israel versus uh, Jan, just because I think that the tempo of this fight will be a bit higher. Um, Casey Kenny, $17. I'm not too interested in him, to be honest. Um, I just think this fight with Cruz is probably going to go to decision. They're both defensively sound. They're both durable. And there's not going to be a whole lot of grappling. They're both very solid grapplers. Um, usually we don't really see a guy really impose himself in terms of the grappling and in turn get a big DFS score, unless if he's got like a big advantage there, like, you know, Ronnie Lawrence against Vince, Vince Kachera last week. It was, it was clear as day he had that. And a lot of people were wise to that prior to the fight. But in this case, they're both very solid wrestlers. They're both very solid grapplers and scramblers. It's just not something that I want to invest in. So uh, I'm pretty much off of the Casey Kenny and Dominic Cruz fight. It's a fight where, like, yeah, Cruz is a live underdog. We got some value on him at 14 bucks. It's a near pick him fight, but it's just not something where I think that it's just going to be this bonkers DraftKings score for the winner um, based on the the likelihood that it goes the distance, based on the guys, each guy's respective rep of being durable, defensively sound. It's going to be a fight that I definitely will want to be underweight to. Song Dong at 17 bucks. I mean, again, similar to the Sterling logic. You know, even though I like Phillips more, I bet him. I'm not going to let my ego get in the way and say, like, you know, Yudong's a bad play or anything. I mean, if Yudong wins, I think it's a decent chance he goes out here and gets a stoppage, to be honest. I mean, that's how I think Yudong has to beat Phillips. I just don't know if he's going to beat Phillips down the stretch. Probably not, unless if it's like the Vera fight. Maybe Phillips is just kind of starting slow, fearing the power a little bit. I just really haven't seen anything out of Phillips to say that he'll fight like that. He just seems like he's a very confident, very aggressive guy, which in turn might mean that he runs into a counter and gets knocked out. Um, so again, Yudong is, isn't a bad play in my opinion. I would rather target him than Kai Car France at 17 bucks, who, again, I mean, I just think he's a much better striker than Bontarine, but Car France generally isn't a power puncher. He's more so a volume guy, more mainly a decision guy. So he's just not a guy that I want to invest heavily in either. Um, Jan Blahovitz at 17 bucks. I mean, even though his, uh, we're talking about some, some value here um, in, in respect to all the other fighters there, because Jan technically has the worst win odds out of all these other fighters here. But again, he's got uh, five rounds to work with. I, I do, I am interested in Jan uh, to some extent. I think he can make this fight close. I think this fight could be lower tempo and he does have advantages here. He's bigger than Israel. Um, 
he has more power in my opinion and he's a better brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner so just because this fight is closer on paper than odds indicate it's pretty much a dog or pass matchup for me from a fan duel perspective it's not that i'm i'm going to be so heavily invested in jan but you know if you're asking me to pick one fight or the other in the matchup i would prefer to target jan blahovitz um Askar Askarov and joe benavidez that fight Askarov at 16 bucks Benavidez at 15 bucks. It's just not something that I want to invest heavily in. I mean, they're both very solid grapplers, just like the Benavidez or the, excuse me, the Kenny um, uh, Cruz fight. I just think that there's going to be a lot of negating each other with the grappling. Joe has always been an excellent scrambler. I would go as far as saying Joe is the best scrambler in the history of the UFC um, when he was at his peak. Um, so Askarov, even though that seems to be his strength, I think he's going to have a, a tougher time taking down and, and controlling Joe. Um, so we're going to get this striking battle where, I think it's mostly going to be, uh, you know, a decision fight. You know, uh, Joe uh, could win by being a bit busier, but Askarov striking really impressed me in the in the Pantoja fight. It definitely has come a long way. Um, Joe's durability has been um, in question, especially after these two fights where he took a lot of damage to Figueredo. He was knocked out by Demetrius Johnson, who's a great fighter, but generally not known as a power puncher. And same thing with Sergio Pettis, good fighter generally not known as a power puncher. He didn't get knocked out, but he still got hurt in that fight. Um, so it's a fight where like, if I were to play one or the other, I would prefer to play Askarov, but uh, Joseph Benavidez is, is a consideration for me as well. You know, he's 15 bucks. He's not expensive. He's, he's a live underdog. Um, I think that stylistically, it's actually a pretty good fight for Joe. It's just, where is he at? Um, he kind of seemingly near the end of his career. He's coming off a lot, two fights where he took a lot of damage. Just something that I don't feel the most confident in. Um, Jordan Espinosa and Tim Elliott, 16 bucks for uh, Espinosa, 15 bucks for Elliott. I think this fight has uh, the potential to, to have a lot of grappling. Um, I'm a little hesitant on that regard because Elliott showed less willingness to grapple that last time out against Benoit. Um, and I think it was because he wanted to manage his cardio a bit better. But Elliott fights. Um, he's usually aggressive. He's a very good catch wrestler, a very good scrambler. Um, and that, in turn, will create a lot of submission opportunities, I think. Um Maybe they just choose to strike. That's the risk. But there's enough potential here with the submission, with the grappling to where I would want exposure to both sides of this fight. Uh, Dominic Cruz touch on him. I think he's a live underdog. Um, the, the price is reasonable, but I just uh, – the price relative to his chance to, uh, of winning is reasonable. But I just don't see much upside in terms of him finishing. So he's not a guy that I'm super, super interested in. Uh, Hogeria Bontarine at 13 bucks. Look, I mean, he's he's got an odds value there. You know, he's 13 bucks yet his um, – his betting line keeps getting better. Um, he's now plus 100 or so, depending on what book you look at per best light odds. You know, he's more in play uh, for me of the two. You know, I, he's cheaper than, than France. I think he's got more upside to finish and more upside to grapple. Um, France is a guy that typically fights competitively. So it's just not, I, I would just, similar to the main event with Israel and, and Blahovitz, it's just a fight where I'd prefer to target the, the cheaper fighter, the underdog. And then just kind of look elsewhere, to be honest. Uh, Megan Anderson at 13 bucks. I just typically don't like to invest in, in underdogs that uh, have, uh, have not the best chance to win per the betting odds. It's just not a long-term investment I would like to make. Look, if I'm making 150 lineups, there's always a case to be made to throw to throw a couple uh, fighters with, you know, maybe not the best betting odds in there. But there's just other investments I'd rather make, including Kyler Phillips for just 12 bucks, one buck cheaper than Anderson, who's got a much better chance to win. Per the betting odds, he's got a five-inch reach on Yudong. I think he's um, the better striker at range with his tools. Um, I think if he gets on top position, and when I mean tools, I mean his kicks, when he gets in top position on, on Yudong, I think he could get a finish there. Um, and, and he is definitely an underdog that I will have some exposure to. Not only could he, does he have a legitimate chance of winning, but I also think he's got a legitimate chance of finishing the fight, as does Thiago Santos, who is in a fight with Alexander Rakic, who – I mean, look, you probably heard on every breakdown this week, Alexander Rakic was hurt by, by Devin Clark. That is a fact. Um, Thiago Santos is a very dangerous kickboxer. So uh, Santos is a guy where it's like, yeah, I mean, again, like that ego logic. I'm picking Rakic to win, but if Santos wins, it's probably going to be by finish. So I'm willing to target Santos, especially for just 11 bucks. That is really cheap. Um, and his win odds aren't bad either. You know, plus 130 looking right now at, at Betway. He's definitely somebody that I, I am interested in for, for FanDuel. Same thing with Alon Cruz at, at 10 bucks. Look, this is a guy that, similar to some of the earlier fighters we talked about, Olberg and Medic, I don't think people will look here. You know, they will just see that, you know, they're not as familiar with his name. And 
Uh, there's really no there's no game log on him, and so they'll just kind of look elsewhere. But he's got a seven inch reach. He's facing a guy that has not been past the sec the fifty one second mark of the second round. And Cruz is you know he landed one hundred and thirty two significant strikes in almost three rounds in that contender series fight. You know I am I am pretty high on this fight from from a DFS perspective, and so I, I do want to target both sides. So Cruz for ten bucks at what I think is going to be a really low ownership, just based on the other options here, people looking elsewhere. I am interested in him. Uh, Livia Souza, I'm just not interested in her for FanDuel. I just, it's kind of like the Dominic Cruz logic. It's like, yeah, I mean, you can make a case that she, she's what she could win. She's live, but her, um, her win odds still aren't great. Um, she is currently, uh, plus 200 on Betway, you know, plus 195 bet online. I just don't really see where she really has a clear advantage over Lemos. And so I just think the best case scenario for her winning would be a close decision, which I just I don't think that that's going to do it really on this slate. Um, not a fighter I want to invest heavily in. And same kind of deal with Jake Matthews. I just think that this is a good style matchup for Sean Brady. And for that reason, I just want to be underweight to Matthews. Even if Matthews wins, I just think outside of kind of like a fluke-ish scenario, like it's, uh, it, it's more so going to be like a close decision again. So just not something I want to invest heavily in. Trevin Jones, we talked about Batista. I think it's a, just a good fight for Batista, even though I'm not high um, Batista for DraftKings. I'm not really high on Jones either. Um, I think Batista's got him pretty much covered. Um, I think Batista's uh, defensive grappling is good enough to keep the fight standing where he's just a better striker than, than Jones. And so Jones is just a, another big underdog, somebody that I don't want to invest heavily in. Unless if my my eyes on tape are telling me an underdog is, is more live than Anza Decay. You know, I remember recommending Tiago Moises against Bobby Green uh, when they fought back when I was a back when I was a tout. Um, but again, that's just, that's not me tooting my own horn. I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm just trying to give an example, but you know, I mean, that's what I'm saying though. It's just like, unless if they got, unless if my eyes tell me from tape, they got a more legitimate chance to win than the odds indicate. I'm not so willing to invest in these big underdogs. And the same thing goes with Drew Dober. And, and look, I, I said it before and I'll say it again. I love Drew Dober. I just don't think this is the best matchup for him. Um, again, making a bunch of lineups, I, I'm willing to throw them in a few, but just a few, just, it would be like out of 150, it would be like 10 at most. I just think it's like one of those puncher's chance things. Um, he's a great fighter. He's improving. I just think this is a really bad style matchup for him. And, and based off that analysis, I just don't want to invest heavily in a guy who still is plus 305 on bet online. So his, his chances to win per the betting odds are not as ideal as I'd like him to, to invest heavily in him. I would just rather invest in underdogs that have better chances to win better chances to finish, you know, Tiago Santos, Kyler Phillips, Alon Cruz, um, even Bontarin, like these types of fighters may be quote unquote risky, but at the same time, they got better odds to win on uh, per the betting lines and they got better chances to finish in my opinion. So it's just sort of out of respect for prioritization. It's not that Dober can't go out here and when I'm not doubting him, it's just like when we're when I'm talking about the, the the likely outcomes, the percentages, what's in there, what's most likely to happen. It's just not something I'm willing to invest a whole lot in. Um, same thing with Kennedy and Joku. Eight dollars only. I mean, he's got a six inch reach advantage, which is nice. You know, you, you don't see often where fighters uh, are are underdogs and they got a pretty decent sized reach. You know, same thing with Phillips. Same thing with Cruz. It's just a, a tougher matchup, I think, for Njoku. Um, I just think Olberg is just a much better striker than him, and he's going to probably win. Um, he's not – Njoku is not a bad play, in my opinion, though. I would rather target him than Matthews, than Souza, than, than Dober, honestly, just because, like, there is still some questions I have on Olberg. He looks legit, but, I mean, he's still only 3-0. and Um and Joku is is a guy that I I'm okay with. I, I wouldn't uh, again making a bunch of lineups 150 or so. I wouldn't mind throwing him in a few, like 10. You know, have five percent exposure to at most. Um, so yeah, I mean, a guy that I don't think people will be high on, and, and he probably doesn't win. But somewhere in the percentages, there there's a, a chance he can, and, and there's enough there where I wouldn't be totally shocked by it. So. Um, yeah, that'll do it uh, for this breakdown. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, like I said off the top, uh, price picks, you can use promo, po promo code, excuse me, AJ100 for 100% instant deposit bonus up to $100. Um, again, it's the price picks is the most straightforward fantasy game on the market and the only one with 100% instant deposit bonus, which is regarded as the best in the industry. 
And uh, again, no optimizers, no sharks, no fish, no mess, multi-entries. It's just you versus the projection. So as simple as it could get, um, and, and they got a very good uh, deposit bonus. So I just want to plug that one more time because I, I just think it's such a great opportunity. This isn't just me you know, wanting to get out here to, to just give a promo, just to give a promo. I want to do this because I really think that there is a value in prize picks. I really believe it. Um, when I was notified of it, I looked at it right away and I, and I thought, yes, this is a cool new idea for DFS players to kind of expand their horizon, uh, you know, uh, you know, put, put their feet wet in something that is similar, but maybe something different that they can really benefit from long term because the market in this is still uh, newer. So there, there's going to be that edge in addition to the to the format that they already have. Right. Again, it's just you versus a projection. You don't have to worry about. You know, if, if you don't have access to all the resources that a lot of the guys in the industry do, you don't have to worry about all that. It's just you versus projection. That's it. Uh, so just it just makes it a lot simpler, um, in my opinion. They're very generous to do this sort of deposit bonus. So, again, I, I truly believe in it. And that's why I'm, I'm getting on here and promoting. It's not just, you know, me wanting to plug something just to plug it. I, I truly believe in it with conviction that it that it, it'll pay off and it's a good long term. It has great long term value. So. Um, that was a kind of a shameless plug of a rant, but uh, I thought that was, you know, justified as, as I really do love this. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys did like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button below. And also please feel free to, to leave a, a pleasant comment if you do so choose. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at AJ underscore S-C-H-U-L-L-O, just like the banner down below is showing. And uh, best of luck on the event. Have a nice day.